Mm. Okay, you ready? Yeah, just let me let me get my phone around. Say that he's on the record and he's just up there. I forget something. No, no, I would have missed that. I would actually miss that. Or wait for you, John. Don't worry about it, John. We'll wait for you. Hey, I was late. Right. <laughs> right, let's go. Okay, we are back. Um, before we go to public comment, I just want the record to reflect that uh, Deputy Mayor Weber has entered and please has not the- reflected uh, on his attendance. <laughs> he's tardy, but he's here. Uh, public comment on agenda items only. Uh, at this time, if anybody is in the audience and wishes to address us on a agenda item, please step on up. Or if you are at home, you can call us at 973-232-4442. That number again is 973-232-4442. Um, seeing no one coming up from the audience and seeing... Uh, no one calling. I will close the public comment portion on agenda items only and move on to reports. Mr. Administrator, please take it away. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple things we've been working on. Uh, Ruby Park, we restored the batting cages and the bullpen at Ruby with some money that we received through insurance. Rossner Field, I don't know if anybody's been down there, but we did some cement work on both dugouts and then they were power washed and painted. New padding has been ordered for around the top of the dugout. It will be in, we are told, 713 and be installed immediately. Currently, right now, the old padding is still up there. Paving projects. We had a pre-con meeting uh, on the 22nd for Cambridge and Litchfield. And I'll give you a little bit of details what we're going to do there. There's some manhole rehabilitation we have to work on. It's going to start the week of July 5th. Uh, probably the 11th is the start date. Actually, it has to be done by 831. Three-day notice will be given to all property owners before. Uh, there's seven trees on Litchfield that will be removed and will replant, and there's some concrete work and drainage work that has to be done. Both of those streets are relatively small, so milling and paving will be done on the same day on that. Um, July 4th, we've been down at, at Mizell preparing for July 4th. Uh, DPW had to take down a bunch of trees that were in the way so that we didn't have a fire with the fireworks going off. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to touch on, and maybe we should wait, or I'm going to have Mike actually join me. We had a redevelopment meeting the other day for uh, the business owners in the center and some redevelopers. And actually, yeah, come on up, join me. And actually, it actually went very, very well. I think we've got some possible nibbles on trying to get some more buildings redeveloped down in the downtown. That, as everyone I think understands, it's very difficult. We've got flooding on the opposite side of the street, which makes it doubly difficult. We also have all of those buildings are connected and they're all individually owned, basically. So it's difficult to get a group of those buildings together. You're, you're trying then to redevelop one, which really doesn't do what we really want to do. But Mike, why don't you fill in also if you have yeah, anything? Yeah, exactly, because we had the... Uh a meeting like this similarly about six, seven years ago when we had property owners coming in, we didn't have any redevelopers. And we were like, look, this is what redevelopment's all about. Here's a great uh, area to do it. And the property owners at the time were like, well, there's nothing really happening. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time. And then we've decided, we've been t- uh, talking about this for the past year, to re-meet with the property owners and get redevelopers in there. Well, we accomplished both. We had property owners uh, there attending the meeting. We had redevelopers there looking to see what the possibilities of doing redevelopment in downtown uh, Morris Avenue. Uh, Like John said, yeah, it has its challenges. Um, The flooding issues, the individual ownership of all the properties, and I'll add on a little bit more of the Gomes property. He probably owns like 30, 40 percent of the buildings down there. Um, So, uh, but on the other end of it, the point being that John said, we wanted to throw the chum out there and see who would bite, and we do have some people, some property owners that would be interested in possible redevelopment. So again, it's the start, 
like we did six, seven years ago to see what's out there and uh, begin, begin the progress of jumping on what's going on with redevelopment. We have other projects going on, and we're just trying to stay and make this work. Uh, again, John knows a, a lot of stuff behind the scenes that are going on, and we think it would be a, a definite advantage to keep going with the redevelopment, you know, in my opinion. But again, it was a, it was a very positive meeting, very well informed. Uh, the redevelopers did talked to me after and talked about the issues going on with Springfield down in downtown Morris Avenue. But again, we have other areas beyond Morris Avenue, that downtown area, that could be a possibility also that would be prime. So again, it's uh, it's all the dialogue and everything, and uh, that was our focus. Again, with the bid, we try to do communication um, and try to make people aware and educate whether it be a redevelopment or a property owner, what's the possibility? So, again, we're being very proactive uh, now in regards to it, and that, um, I, again, I, th I think the meeting went very, very well. Yeah, and, and again, I think that's what we need to do is to try to keep the ball rolling. You just got to keep putting this out there and see if it's time that somebody decides to bite. You, you just don't know who that might be. So I think it was very successful. Yeah, and we do, have, we do have some things. We had Springfield is still desirable. We had... I've had several other people approach me about other places that they're looking at. So we're mm -hmm. still, we're in the mix. So we just have to keep working on it. And again, it's called communication, and we're doing on our end of it, reaching out to people. Um, I'm probably talking to a couple property owners on a monthly basis in regards to the development of their properties and leading them over to John. Um, but when I originally, st we originally started the bid, I sat down with Mike Minitari from Union, and he was the bid director. And he goes, Michael, it's going to take you 10 years before redevelopment even happens. And we're on year 11. So, but we're getting progress now. Now you can see it. It's happening. So we're just trying to stay ahead of the curve and being very proactive in uh, having redevelopment be a, a true reality. And again, the whole thing behind it, what Mike told me 10 years ago, you got to have patience. Uh, you know, I get it. I get talk, asked all the time that people do want to see what's going on. And we look at the Gomes property and maybe some stuff comes up and somebody, some, some things don't happen at all. We just have to be patient. And patience is a virtue. It's the only way we're going to get through this. And I think we will. To do nothing is not an option. We have, to, we have to forge ahead. And whether it be one small property or one big property, we have to stay, continue with the idea because who's going to benefit from it? I believe the residents, and I also believe the businesses, obviously, from it. So it's just patience with it, and we're just all working together as a team. And that was always my theme is, like, the team is it. So. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, is Gomes going to have the sidewalk open for Caldwell <clears throat> by September? Or that is the goal, and I know, it's been I, I, I know, and we are we're talking to him. I will keep you updated on that. I'd like to see the building done. <laughs> I hope to see it in my lifetime. Yeah. Well, I think as you've noticed, anybody that's passed, he does have the framing started now on the second floor. They were there today uh, doing some more rebar work. So the steel guys are going to put up some more steel. So he is moving. And committing capities had the pleasure of going through uh, the Sachs property oh, last week or great. so. They are, they are moving. It's a huge development, and they are certainly moving. Yeah, they, they fly. They're making tremendous progress. So that's on schedule. They're doing John, well. when you say on schedule, what do you approximate? What do you think? I think they said, I, I had the details. Guess. I think it was next spring. They're going to oh. start with the renting of the apartments, and I think the townhomes are after that. Okay. But I will double check for you. I, okay. I do have that written down somewhere. Just, You've talked to the school. And school. I, I told them when we got the plans, the schools. Up to date with everything. Right? I, I met with the superintendent, and I think the uh, administrator has on various different occasions. And I, I can say that I've walked her through a two hour meeting. So, okay. well, sure. and as always, Rich, you know, we're here every day. Yeah, if they have a question or a comment or anything, anybody, the public's welcome to come in. We'll show them all the drawings and walk them through any of the developments. Right. We're always here. And the reveries, uh, uh, the, the board president came to the planning board meeting. <laughs> Uh, at our latest development when we heard it on the planning board, if you recall. So they've been in the loop. That's right. Yes, he was there. Mm -hmm. Chris? I just want to add one thing for yeah. you guys. Um, 
You know, it, it, it took a while to understand it before I got up here um, on how much we can let the public know and how much we mm-hmm. got to kind of just sit on our hands and, and keep our mouths quiet. And I was talking to the mayor the other day. Um, and there's a lot of things, you know, I, I guess we've lost track of how many people have actually contacted General Green and that plaza and their owners and how many developers have tried to talk to them and have reached out and said, we've got these magnificent mm-hmm. plans, we'd like to rebuild, we'd like to... Re- and it's almost to the point where, you know, we all sit up here and we all listen and we listen and we listen and we'd love to be able to put that out every time. And, but it's almost at the point of crying wolf at times where you, you just can't and you've got to sit on. So I guess the point of what I'm saying is to anybody out there watching right now is that there's a lot that happens that... Uh, Unfortunately, we don't really um, talk about because it, uh, most of these roads are, are dead ends at that point. If, if we have an unwilling property owner um, that doesn't want to sell and doesn't want to redevelop, we're kind of stuck. Yes, But I agree. it doesn't mean that something isn't working behind scenes at all times. We have more that don't come to fruition than do. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And, and so. Correct. And, you know, the General Green, you're absolutely right. We've reached out to him several times. We've just reached out to him again about a month ago in regards to our meeting, and there is no interest in regards to doing it. However, what we found with Gomes, it was a different situation, we reached out to him 15, 20 times, and he finally came to the table because we were there was starting dialogue. Right. So um, the idea behind doing the redevelopment with General Green, which I think would be fantastic, is just to keep reaching out, keep nudging, and finally they go, you know what? Mm. But it's a re. It's a real estate, in, real estate investment trust, and it's a little bit different as it, go, as it goes to he's just being a landlord. So, but again, we did reach out about a month ago, and there was no, no feedback or interest back. So. But you just never know when that day is. That's exactly it. looks and goes, you know what, now's the time. Hopefully they look at, you know, I don't know whether it's Larkin's building or Gomes' building or some, anything and say, hey, you know, um, I think all of us feel the same way, that that is almost like the key way. Yeah. Springfield. It's the way. gateway, yeah. Yeah. And this was our intention. We're like, oh, and if we can just get them here um, to discuss it, we think it would open it up. But they haven't even offered to even come out and see it. But me and John talked about it, and John's been in there. They're doing the, that sign. Have that has been approved yet? Yes, it was. All right, so that's just an opportunity to have dialogue there. So We keep trying. That's all we can do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Michael. Right, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, do you want me to? I've got some updates on the Emerald Ash Board. Do we want to wait? Because I see we've got some people interested in that. Or do you want my comments on where we are on it now? I would hold off. Okay. Um, will that conclude your report? That will conclude my report unless anybody has questions no or comments. Uh, is the pool, the pool, no problems with the pool. I haven't gotten any calls, so. No, we actually put a new water line in on the slide. And that started, I think, this weekend was probably the first good weekend we had. We had two great days. I heard nothing at all. So hopefully everything went well. The I heard nothing. I heard, I, the only thing I heard was um, the baby pool. They usually have a you should not be in the baby pool, first <laughs> well, of all. As, I, as I think doing. you know, the baby pool has a leak. We camered it. Yeah. We're trying to fix that. There is a, there's a leak at a T somewhere. So they actually put a camera through the lines. And they're gonna have to they're gonna have to break up a little bit of concrete and get down to it. So the spray wasn't working or something. Oh. I said if that's the only problem, I'm not working. Yeah, I mean the pool's been painted. I think you know if you've been up there, the pool looks great. We've had no complaints at all on it. So so far so good. Knock on wood. Um, okay, so that will conclude the administrator's report. Mike Sclera, you have another minute <laughs> for the bid update. Yes. So anyway, um, we have Streetscape. We're looking at Mountain Avenue. We have all the contracts in. So we're looking by where Gary Hecht's office is, doing Streetscape on both sides. Um, We have all the contracts coming in. So we're hopefully, by the end of the year, or 2023. Um, We have the, this is amazing. Um, This was dropped off to me today. The Springfield um, businesses, we've been going out to the mall and asking them for gift certificates 
for events coming up, the 4th of July, uh, the summer concert series, everything. And I have over 40 gift certificates that they gave out in the past week from 20 different locations. So again, it's a way for us to drive business to them, and they have been fantastic. So right here, I have 40 gift certificates. We'll probably have 60, and we utilize them for any events coming up in Springfield to give them away. Um, and then we have the our summer concert series. It's July 28th and August 25th. It'll be in front of Town Hall here. Uh, we have Scream Truck that we have hired, and we will be taking care of all the ice cream oh, again. <laughs> so the 25th and, tw and 20, uh, 28th and 25th, 28th of July and 25th of August, Scream Truck will be out there, and we'll have two bands, which will be announced. And lastly... Um, on the other end of it, what we do, we get notifications of new businesses coming into town. So we have ribbon cutting events. We're like the welcoming committee, and then we promote them on the face on our Springfield uh, bid Facebook page. Though the two is uh, Lim Francis Realty. They're having a ribbon cutting event July 9th, and then the brisket guys. Um, it was amazing. I went to them last week, and they got sold out within about two to three hours. That's good. And so. Their thing is brisket, and they are very, very good at what they do. But right now, they're keeping it at soft opening. So if you got an invite for a ribbon cutting, it was postponed because they're, uh, <laughs> I don't know if they were ready for what was to come. But they're really uh, excited to, to do something. So the brisket guys and then the realtor company coming in also. Okay. Anything? Like All right. No, I, Thank I you, guys. Appreciate uh, it. Appreciate that, and I'll see you at those two events. Um, hey, can we just put the concert series on our website if we haven't done so already? Um, all right, moving on to, we have no minutes today, and we will move on to new business. We have one ordinance on second reading. Madam Clerk, will you please read the ordinance? Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, finance. can we no, do... No, uh, we, uh, finance, finance gets moved to the end of the oh. meeting. Oh, my apologies. This ordinance amends provisions of the Township Code governing recreational and medical cannabis within the Township. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move for approval on second reading, Ordinance 2022-16, as read by Madam Clerk and publicized in the local source July 7th, 2022. Okay. Uh, seeing a second, we will open this up to public hearing. If anybody wishes to uh, uh, address this ordinance in the audience, please step on up. If you are at home, you can call us at 973-232-4442. That number again is 973-232-4442. I'll give everybody a moment. But seeing no one stepping on up. and This is just mainly the locations, am I correct? And no one calling, I will close the public comment portion of the meeting and committeeman uh, Huber. Uh, Huber, you're recognized. Go ahead, Mr. Attorney. Yeah, so uh, I heard the question. So the question was whether, you know, what the thrust of this ordinance was. There are a few minor, fairly self explanatory um, changes to clean, to clean it up a little bit. But the main change for this one, um, this is about, I think, the third revision that we've, made, that we've done, is to um, expand. Along the um, the HC zone, the permitted areas from a zoning standpoint um, for all of the different types of cannabis entities, except for retail. Retail stays HC zone, um, but the other um, business entity types for cannabis uh, will now be permitted in the I twenty and I forty, the industrial zones that are immediately adjacent to the HC zone. So, essentially, uh, I think there's a small area north. Of, uh, on the north mm -hmm. side of 22 and the larger area on the south side. Of and then, John, you were part of it. The reason we had to do that was because if we went by the original, there would be no store, there'd be no place to go, am I correct? We actually didn't take into consideration. We were so focused on the retail only. Yeah. We really didn't take into consideration the other potential or the other licenses that are available to be given out. So we kind of little, little got a little too narrow focus there. We had to go back and relook at it. Okay. I want to make sure I explain it to everybody. Thank you. Um, it was seconded by Deputy Way Mayor Weber. Second. Um, so, and, and just to be clear, so we, because I've heard back and forth, this would be for distribution manufacturing, places that would be more aptly situated in an industrial area and not wanting to take up storefront. Um, with that, can I call Madam Clerk? Please call the roll. 
Committeeman Capitis. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Women Du Bois. Yes. Committeeman Huber. Yes. Mayor Kaiser. Yes. And we will move on to first readings. We only have one first reading for an ordinance. Madam Clerk, please read the ordinance. This ordinance amends the existing ordinances governing certain employment positions and establishes compensation ranges for such positions within the Township of Springfield. Motion. Mr. Mayor, as read by Madam Clerk, uh, ordinance 2022-21, um, publication of legal source July 7th. With final hearing on July 19th. I second. Second. All right. Do we have discussion up here? Any member have a question? No. 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 Seeing no. none. All right. I think it's pretty self explanatory. Um, so can I have a roll call? Committeeman Huber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committeeman Capitis. Yes. Deputy yes. Mayor Weber. Yes. Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Um, all right, resolutions. We will adopt on a consent agenda. If you wish to have a resolution pulled, please let me know as I read through them. We have resolution 2022-168, resolution 2022-169, resolution 2022-170, resolution 2022-171. Hold that one. Resolution 2022-172, resolution 2022 well, did that actually? Uh, resolution 2022-174. Resolution 2022-175. Resolution 2022-176. Resolution 2022-177. Resolution 2022-178. Resolution 2022-179. Resolution 2022-180. Resolution 2022-181. Resolution 2022-182. Resolution 2022-183 and Resolution 2022-184, which I will one. pull. All right, we have two pulled the uh, thing, but can we please adopt the consent agenda first? Deputy Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve resolutions 2022-168, 2022-169, 2022-171, 2022-172, 2022-173, Twenty twenty two one seventy four, twenty twenty two one seventy five, twenty twenty two one seventy six, twenty twenty two one seventy seven, twenty twenty two one seventy eight, twenty twenty two one seventy nine, twenty twenty two one eighty, twenty 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 two one eighty one, twenty twenty two one eighty two, and twenty twenty two one eighty three. Do we have a second? I second. Uh, roll call. Deputy Mayor Weber? Yes. Committee Man Capitis? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Committee Huber? Yes. Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Uh, resolution 2022-171, Madam Clerk, please read the resolution. This resolution authorizes the hiring of one seasonal laborer for the Township's Department of Public Works. Do we have a motion? Motion, Mr. Mayor, 20, 22-171 is read by Madam Clerk. Do we have a second? In um, the only reason I pulled this was, uh, John, to explain to the public, you know, that not that we're increasing. This is a guy that worked for us for a period of time, and he has to take a break, and then we're allowed to bring him back. He can't have continuous service. He's only part-time. There's no benefits. He gets a flat, flat, sal a flat hourly wage, and that's it. There's no benefits at all. So he was on a break for, what's it, 30 days, I believe, Craig? 30 days. I think it's 30 days he has to he has to be out. So he's coming back after the 30 days. I just want the public to realize no, we're not. Not an addition, actually, just a continuation. Okay. okay. Uh, roll call. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Man Capitis. Yes. Committee Man Huber. Yes. Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Uh, resolution 2022-184. Madam Clerk, will you read the resolution? This resolution denounces the United States Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization and encourages responsive action by state and federal elected officials through legislation. I 100% make a motion to adopt resolution 2022-184 as read by Madam Clerk. A second. Uh, seeing a second. I, I, I pulled this resolution. I actually proposed this resolution uh, uh, tonight. Uh, because I think it's important that we take a stand as a governing body. 
Uh, when I was first elected, I, I, I made a commitment that even though sometimes there's issues decided above our committee, our voice does matter. And I think in this time and place, our, our voice to denounce what went on is needed. Uh, for 50 years, uh, uh, we're seeing a rolling back of, of, of an individual right, uh, specifically this one for our women. And it is the wrong direction uh, uh, that, that, that this court is taking us. And, and for our, throughout our entire his, history, we've seen progress, and, and, and there has been awful decisions in the past, but for the most part, we've progressed forward. And after 50-something years to uh, take away settled law, and let's be very clear, this is not going to stop abortions. It's just going to stop unsafe abortions. There are people who rely on this for, for health emergencies. It's not just a terminating pregnancy and something so personal uh, to be rolled back and, and, and to basically say that we don't have a, a right to privacy because it's not explicitly stated in the Constitution, which we know our founding fathers uh, uh, authored to be a living, breathing document. And somehow uh, 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 a select few, a minority in this country, is, is going to roll that back uh, with just uh, legal theory <laughs> that, that a vast majority of Americans don't believe in. So uh, as this governing body, I ask us to, to, to vote in favor of this. And, and I know this doesn't mean a whole lot. I don't think the Supreme Court is reading our, uh, our denouncement. But I, I think it's important to show where we stand. So uh, uh, thank you, everybody who worked on this. And uh, I will be voting yes. Um, thank you. I, I got to tell you, uh, I, I don't have anything to add to what you said, except for uh, I, f I find it um, hmm, find it difficult to um, to handle that uh, a bunch of men are making decisions for women, and uh, what. Um, is the benefit of, of, of their body, and uh, I uh, support this resolution also. I've been really angry all week, like really angry, and I continue to be. So I don't have a lot to say tonight because I don't want the anger that I've been kind of bottling up all week with all this going on to come out <laughs> uh, up here. but. To be a, a woman and to be a mother of daughters and a sister and an aunt of nieces and a friend of other women and to be living through what we're living through this week, just, um, it seems unbelievable. And like the mayor said, reading this tonight or supporting this tonight is not going to shake the uh, Supreme Court members and say, oh, now we have to rethink our stance. But um, we do need to stand by our residents and just speak to the support of uh, bodily autonomy in this country and women not being incubators. So with that being said, Mayor, I appreciate you doing this. Um, like I said, my head hasn't been very clear all week because watching what's happening in our country is really... Uh, hard to swallow, basically. So I appreciate you doing this. And I appreciate you, you up here supporting this. So thank you. I agree with what everybody said. And just to repeat, but I do support this. That's all I can say. You know, I, I'm just... Thank you. The, the, the actions of the Supreme Court, it's just an unforgivable travesty. And I appreciate it. Your, uh, Putting this on the agenda, Mr. Mayor. It's, it's not just me, it's all of us. So with that, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Mayman Huber. Yes. Committee Men Capitis. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Uh, discussion and action items. Um, discussion and action items. We have none tonight. That is good, but we do have a lot of correspondence. 
Um, we've received a letter from the New Jersey American Water uh, petitioning to implement a distribution system improvement uh, charge. A hearing is set for July 11th at 4.30 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. Um, we have a Cranford Ordinance 2022-116 uh, amending the Township Code to update the land and development escrow and fees schedule. And we also received a letter from the County of Union regarding Hillside Avenue, which will be closed due to construction on June 30th and July 1st from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. Before we move on to public comment, Deputy Mayor Weber, can we pay some bills? Okay, I make a motion for payroll and invoices for the period of June 15th, 2022 through June 28th, 2022 in the amount of $1,071,000. $314.03. Second. Uh, can we have a roll call? Deputy Mayor Weber? Yes. Kim Eamon Huber? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Kim Eamon I cry every time I look, every time yes. we do that. Capiz was yes. Uh, Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Yes, and everybody has received the current budget report as of May 31st, 2022, the pool budget report as of May 31st, 2022, the current revenue report as May 31st, 2022, and the pool revenue report as of May 31st, 2022. So please file and read accordingly. And we. Before we go to public comment, yes. can I say something? Because I forgot. Oh, right I, I forget when our meetings are sometimes. I just wanted to take a minute to thank. Um, everyone on a township level that was involved in putting together the uh, Juneteenth event. Uh, I know you were there, Mr. Mayor, and it was it was a great event. And I got to meet a lot of new people from town that I didn't know. And I, I always feel like I know everybody. And so when I meet new people, I'm like, wait a second, when did you get here? But in reality, I don't think I know 17,000 people or whatever. But um, the... Uh, close. Pretty close. Recreation, of course. And DPW, I'm sure, assisted in that, and our our PD and our, our auxiliary PD, um, and everyone who was there. So it was a great event. Like I said, it was it, a lot of happy people, a lot of new people. So it's great to see new people coming together on a happy note. Because as I stated earlier, it's been a couple, you know, an unhappy time in the country. So so it's nice to see happy happy things happening. No. So thanks for all those people. Uh, uh. Committee Woman Dubois, I, I totally forgot that we went to that. I know. It feels it, like it was it an, feels eternity. Like a, an eternity ago. Well, we've but. gone back into nine, the 1930s, so it's, <laughs> yeah. like, it's like quantum leap. So <laughs> maybe, maybe we forgot. Uh, maybe one, we other, forgot. one other event. The progressive stuff in the world. One other event that I, I think most of us was at was also the 242nd anniversary of the Battle of Springfield. Uh, 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 so thank you, Chief Cook, for... For that wonderful celebration and the daughters of the American Revolution. Were the Supreme Court that. justices yeah. there? Because maybe that's what happened. <laughs> they, uh, they, they were not, but George Washington was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so that was another wonderful event that we uh, that we attended, and I, I um, don't believe there was another one unless no, I'm forgetting. But as far as that's concerned, anybody who's watching that this this group, they need they need. Younger members, they need some interest going on in here. Um, I spoke to a lot of a lot of the um, DAR and a lot of the the SAR uh, members, and they all said the same thing. Boy, if we could get some some other kids in here and, and so on, and some youths, some youths to to carry it. Chief, if you could if you could talk on that for a minute, please, about getting what would we do to get some young blood in there too because uh, they're interested they don't want to see this tail off yeah I mean when when we were doing the, the historical society was doing the the fourth grade or fifth grade um, tours we would bring them and a lot of the kids were very interested in it and uh, I know we had one one young lady who actually would come and help us out in the house when we did our tours there um, you know that kind of fell by the wayside with COVID for for a bit um, but we're working on, we're putting a, vi a video together to do a tour of the house inside and try to, and to get that out and to try to show, get more interest. And I mean, the town is like so historical. It's, it's, it's beyond. People don't really realize the significance of Springfield in, in the Revolutionary War itself. Can I throw so, something your way? All these kids, I, I, I have more, more kids than not coming to me. Look at looking for for hours to to graduate, uh, they have this community service thing they have to work. 
I don't know if we're if they're involved in that in the historical society, but I'm sure there's some way to put some of these kids to work and let them get hours because I've run out of things to tell people. I throw them all to Alley. Yeah, I, I go clean the rivers. I mean, I don't. I, I throw them all that way. That's the only thing I know. Yeah, I can discuss that with the executive board of the. Uh, Maybe society. there's something they can do in the in terms of I don't know. What, you, you know what I'm talking about. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, it's kind of hot in those costumes. Double hours, I would say. Well. Cemetery work. I don't know. <laughs> They're going to put on the new roof. <laughs> well, last time, I don't know how many people were here. Sure when it was powdered wigs. But last time they had a big celebration here. I forget what year it was. But remember, you were on the police department then. They had a uh, battle. Right. Um, Two years back. Three years yeah. Ago. Three years ago. The 220. Uh, this is bigger. This was. They had uh, Ruby Park. They had. I don't think they are the well, full where the football field is now, but it wasn't turf then. It was it was it was a right, whole yeah, weekend the, event. We, the encampments it's, it's were two behind battles to go. <laughs> it, it was a long time ago. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, if I could just add, you know, we're talking about celebrations and anniversaries, and and I certainly didn't want to pull this in the uh, from the agenda because of time, but we did pass a resolution tonight uh, renaming some parts of South Springfield Avenue St. James Way. Um, we have a governing body who's always been in support, support of our religious organizations in town and our religious leaders. Uh, St. James Church is uh, upcoming this year. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I think it's next year going to celebrate 100 years. Uh, St. James Church just got uh, just a year now a new leader, Father David Santos, who just became the pastor. Uh, and, uh, you know, they are planning uh, their 100-year celebration uh, so it's just wanted to give a shout out to them, and, and again, we do recognize our religious organizations and our leaders. So we have some exciting times coming up from them as well, and uh, you know that's another staple of our community. It certainly is. Um, all right. Seeing no further comment from the committee, I will open this up to the public comment portion of the agenda. Anybody wishing to address uh, the township committee on any governmental issues, you can step on up now. Or if you wish, if you're at home, you can call us at 973-232-4442. May I just remind everybody, since, uh, oh, you can step on up. You, you can step on up. Uh, the, the public has a, 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 a time period of five minutes to speak. We will not interrupt you. You can take as those entire five minutes, say what's on your mind. And at that point, I'll say thank you for your time, and then you can sit back up. At that time, township committee members can make a comment. But more for us up here, <clears throat> refrain from commenting until those five minutes. Uh, our CFO is keeping count. So state your name and address for the record. My name is Peter Lee. My address is 26 Rose Avenue. Mr. Mayor, council members, all thank you for hearing me this evening. I stand here because I drove home the other night and there was a lovely array of signs in front of my house. And at first I thought someone was putting up something for some political reason. No, it was a bunch of signs saying that you're gonna be cutting down some trees potentially. That's great. I am the first contiguous property to where it is that you plan to remove trees from. At one point this was my wife's family's property. So we are well aware of the scope and the size. There is no greater fan of the tree than I am. I throw axes. I need them to be cut down so I can throw axes at them. I'm okay if we have to cut them down. I really am, as long as we replace them. My problem is this. There was zero communication. No one came to my property and said, <clears throat> I have an arborist. He'd like to check your five ashes, of which ours touch, two of them, and we'd like to make sure nothing has carried over. No one said, if we have to have somebody come in, we realize that one of our trees is completely over your garage, and we're going to have to have somebody in a bucket over your garage, over your property, to take care of it. I did not see anything in the newspaper or on cable or anywhere until I got home. And I said, well, in a former life, I was the political beat guy for Susquehanna County, Pennsylvania. I covered the county. I covered nine different towns. I love this stuff. This is where things get done. Anybody can say you have to go up the tree. No, if I can't get you guys to believe what I'm selling, I can't take it to the county. And I can't take it from the county to the state. You're the ones that are the, the doorway to get us into the next part. What I ask is, can we maybe demark which trees we may potentially have a problem with? Because all there are are signs. These trees, that's pretty broad. To the insect that we're talking about, it's supposed to go after ash trees, but to my understanding, <clears throat> there are also willow trees that the township planted there less than 10 years ago. Are 
they being checked for another parasite? Are we just not doing anything with them at all? I'd like to make sure that if you guys are going to be traipsing across my lawn, tearing apart the property, taking down the trees that are possibly going to infect everything on both sides, the spillway side and the other side of the street, because those trees line the entire street, I'd love to know what we're going to do. And if we do take them down, what are we going to put in their place? Formerly, I lived in Verona, which is the town known for the little leaf lindy. It'll only grow 15 feet, except for the 35-foot one that's in the front of my mother's house <laughs> that's torn up the sidewalk every year for 10 years that she's had to pay to have replaced. I'd like to know whether or not will the council come over to the people in the community and say, what do you guys want to put there? This is what our arborists suggest. Could I even get a copy of the arborist report on what's going on? Because obviously, if your trees are all infected and they're touching my trees, there's a pretty good chance my trees are infected too. I'm not going to pick over whose trees infected what trees. I don't care. But what I need to know is what's the plan going forward? Because in honesty, guys, you drop the ball on communicating. And I've seen all of you around town for the last two and a half years. I might not be able to put a name to every face, but I know you when I see you. And my wife always looks and goes, pop, 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 and I go, yes, Joe, that's that stuff. I got you. And then I know who we're talking about. But it would have been incredibly easy for you guys to put a note in my door or in my mailbox and say the arborist would like to check your trees too, or this is what we're doing. Then I wouldn't be standing here tonight saying, where did we drop the ball and how do we pick it back up again? I don't want to have to come here and be the guy standing up for raising all sorts of hat. That's not who I am. I want to come here when I have a real problem, so you listen to me. So hopefully we can get this fixed going forward. I will help however I can. I don't care. If you guys want input from us, feel free. Come knock on the door. I always have a pot of coffee on, and I am a certified executive pastry chef. Nice. So it's good call. Bakery may happen sometimes. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, Thank can you, you leave me your Thank number? Thank you, Peter. So, so oh. just, just to, uh, uh, you know, the, the buck stops with me, so I do apologize for the communication. Um, we will get that rectified. Mr. Administrator, please have a DPW contact. Can you leave me your number? Residence. 26. And I'll have uh, your phone number, and I'll have DPW director call you. Sure thing. Right. I'll give it to you after the meeting. And, and, Thank you. And, 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 and one of your neighbors. Wait a minute. I didn't know that they were doing it until those signs were up. So. Well, and just to be clear, I mean, all ash trees are yeah. going to have to go because they're infected. Uh, we've looked at no other town surrounding us is trying to treat them. We've looked into that, and it's extremely, it's extremely expensive. Let me explain to you what happens. You're looking at every other year the tree has to be treated again. You're looking at somewhere between seven fifteen and a thousand dollars per tree, and it can last up to fifteen to twenty years for the treatments. So we are we are going to remove them before we have a problem and they fall and hurt somebody. If you look, you can see the tops start to die, the bark starts to fall off, the emerald ash borer is in there. There's nothing you could do about it. So we've decided that the, the best course of action is to remove them. I, 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 I don't think anybody's second guessing that, but I, I think for this resident is more of a communication, and I think we can do better. So thank you for your sure. comments. Thank you. Um, we have a busy, busy day today. Who's next? Hello. Chairwoman, please state your name and address. Allison the Miller, record. One Hemlock Terrace. Also chair of Springfield Environmental Commission. First of all, everybody keeps saying all the surrounding towns are taking down all the ash trees. It's not true. Milburn is protecting a bunch of ash trees that they've... Excuse that they've, me. We talked to Milburn directly. The only ash trees well, they are protecting is anything that's historic. Other than that, they're removing. Well, I was hold told on. there's... And anyone on the... Uh, hold on. Uh, before we go, uh, the residents, once again, I will remind everybody, has five minutes. We will not interrupt the resident during that five minutes. After such, members of the uh, on the dais can then uh, present a counter argument. Okay. I'll also say that Fanwood uh, has, is saving half of their trees. They uh, got rid of all the ones that proposed a problem being near sidewalks or over wires. It's not true that no towns are saving trees. I don't know who told you that. I've reached out to shade tree commissions all over the county. There are several towns that are saving trees. We decided in 2016 it wasn't worth saving the trees. The numbers that you're giving are not the numbers that, I, that we've done research to find out. We, we've found that it's about $200 a tree for the treatments, which is a heck of a lot less money than it costs to take down these trees. 
I've resigned myself to the fact that our township doesn't want to save the ash trees. You guys just want to do what's easier and take them all down. We've fought about trees over and over again, year after year after year. Nobody wants to, to be bothered to treat the trees because it's not um, guaranteed to work. So, you know, I don't run the town, but I do love trees. And not only are you guys taking down ash trees all over town, you're taking trees all over town. You just talked about a bunch of trees over by um, the, in the beginning of the session, over by um, Mizell Field that you just decided to take down because of fireworks. There are trees that get taken down in this town every day all over town. Part of the beauty and, and what brings people to this town are, are how the trees line the streets and, and how the trees look beautiful all over town. It was part of the draw for me and so many other people. And this township takes down too many trees. And they've done it year after year after year. And the Environmental Commission has never consulted about taking down trees. Nobody asks us. Some of us have expertise on trees. We know other people. We know arborists. How about we form some kind of shade tree commission here in town so that the township works with the environmental commission and with the green, te green team so that we can review some of these trees before you guys just decide to take them all down. We're never informed. We're never asked. We find out by seeing the signs like everybody else. That's not fair and it's not right. We need to work together. And, and save some trees and not just take them all down. I understand, you know, the DPW has a very hard job, and they do a great job with our snow removal and with keeping the town nice. They really do, but they love to take down trees, and it's, they don't care. I don't know why they don't care, because as citizens, we all care. And then I hear um, Bob's telling me, well, people don't want trees planted in front of their houses. You know what? Come and ask us. We could identify a million spaces where people would love trees or where there are spaces for trees to be planted. So I'd really like some more communication with the Environmental Commission on that. Also, um, on another topic, uh, we need more idling signs in town, Chief Cook. Um, there are uh, parking lots all over town where people just sit and idle their cars. Uh, I know we have them over by the schools. We need to add some over by Chisholm. We need any parking lots that we have in town. We need more anti-idling signs because idling is a problem in town, and, and we just we need to get some more signs up, and we'd be happy to work with you guys as far as showing you locations where we think that they uh, would do best. Um, also, I wanted to know when the last tree inventory was completed. Uh, do we have a list of trees uh, that were cut down since 2016 from the ash borers? And do we have a list of trees that have been planted? Because I notice we take down trees and then we plant these tiny little things. We live in a flood zone, guys. I, I lost two floors of my house from the flood. We live in a flood zone. You guys love to take down trees. How about we plant some real trees instead of these teeny little sticks? And, and, you know, something that can absorb some water and give us back some clean air that we're taking away. Um, my full five minutes, what else can I say up here? Uh, yeah, just, I, we'd like to be advised before tree removals. And, and, again, maybe form a shade tree commission within town so that the DPW can work with us and maybe we can save some of these trees that they just want to take down. Thank Chair you. Chairwoman, will that conclude your remarks? Yes. Thank you. Um, just a, 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 a couple points. I think, uh, your suggestion of doing a shade tree commission is, is well noted. And uh, I think, I, I don't speak for everybody up here, but I think that is something that we can explore going forward. And I would direct the township attorney to do such. In taking uh, such action I, I, and presenting that for further discussion for the township committee. Um, not to make this and get this into a debate up here, but I would ask if you have any research that shows different than what our township is saying, if you can present that to us through the administrator, um, and then we can make a decision as to if we had the correct information before. Um, I think that would be the best uh, course of action. Um, Mr. Administrator, do you have any comments? No, I, as you said, we don't want to get into a debate. We can have a meeting with the Environmental Commission and DPW. I think that's probably the best way to go forward. I agree. Okay, thank you. Speaking of a youth, I think we have one before us now. 
State your name and address for the record. Uh, Ayana Ellis, 38 Springbrook Road. Hi, um, oh. so I'm a student at Dayton who lives in Springfield and I'm also talking about trees, but I just thought it, from a different perspective as someone who's grown up in Springfield my whole life, I love this town, obviously Ara wouldn't be here. here. And um, I just think that this town is so, like it's so beautiful, there's so much natural beauty, like I've been to tons of other towns for track meets and different events, and this town is just so beautiful with so much natural wildlife and everything. And I think that any measure that can be taken to save that, like not only in terms of preserving the natural beauty and like real estate prices in this town, but also it's a flood zone as mentioned before. So I do have um, a little information regarding that to further reiterate what Ali said before. So according to a study by University of Wisconsin, um, research suggests that insecticide treatments are significantly more effective on EAB infested ash trees with less than 50% of canopy thinning. So I know earlier you mentioned that the ash trees in the forest are already beginning to be infected, but that doesn't necessarily mean they are beyond saving. As well, a study um, by the IPM uh, that's pulled from the New Jersey Department of Agriculture states that when trees were treated only the first year but not the second year, so not on an annual basis, density of live larvae, larvae was 75 to 80 percent lower than on untreated control trees, so it's not necessarily an annual and intensive process. Um, as well as in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the capacity of ash trees to filter stormwater saves the city more than enough money to justify the cost of treating trees, so I know this is very much an economic issue. So um, on Purdue University, there's actually something called the Emerald Ash Borer Cost Calculator, where an inventory of the number and size of ash trees and the cost of removing and treating the trees, as well as the cost of replacing each tree that is removed, um, can all be calculated into this calculator. And within less than a minute, the cost can be found. So I know that this is not purely just I like trees, I want trees to be saved, but it is very much an economic issue. But I would just like the Township Committee to take a little bit of time to look into if there is any way that these trees can be preserved, because taking down all the ash trees will not only have detriments in terms of the flood zone, but this is really a beautiful town, and I'd love to see it preserved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, will you yield for a question? Sorry? Will you yield for a question? Yeah. Um, just what, what, what event do you run in track? Um, I do like four by one, 400 turtles, 400, 800. Much faster than I was, but uh, as a fellow Dayton track star, <laughs> what, what good grade, luck. Sorry. What grade are you in? I'm going to be a senior, senior. this year. You're going to be a? a senior. Sounds senior. Crazy. Have you, have you, you've done, you did a wonderful job in just expressing your point and how you feel. And, and it was wonderful. What Have you given any thought about what you wanted to do after high school? Um, environmental science. <laughs> awesome. I got to tell you, as a parent, I'm telling you, you must make your mother and your father very, very proud for what you did tonight. Thank you. I actually do band with Madison. And she's very what? Nice. I do band with Madison. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. When you become an environmental lawyer, Chris will take those words back real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Just Springfield. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Give enough topics for everybody, or is this yeah, for? Okay, we'll disperse. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else in the audience wishing to address the committee, please stand on up. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Carly Kennedy. I live at 25 Rose Avenue. The tree situation in our neighborhood has been weighing on my family for about four years now. An estimated 22 healthy trees have been chopped down within Ruby Park over the past few years. The ash trees across the street from my home on Rose Ave appear to be diseased. The trees are sick due to human negligence. They could have and should have been treated and should serve as a warning. I'm here tonight to bring attention to the back forest of Ruby Park. It is a natural forest of mostly ash trees and an extremely important part of our neighborhood, including all of the properties on the streets of Rose Ave, Tooker, Codwell Place, Salter, and Lyons. 
These trees are a vital part of our community. They provide oxygen, absorb pollution in our air, and drink up flood water. The township has known for a long time that the emerald ash borers are threatening the ash tree population of the Northeast. When they found out the borers were coming, they decided to chop down all 200 of the township's ash trees. We have bugs killing our trees, and instead of trying to kill the bugs, our township has decided it is a better plan to kill all of the trees first. Most ash trees can be treated with an injection straight into the trunk for around $200 to $300, depending on the size of the tree. These injections are over 90% effective and protect the trees from the borers. The trees will need this treatment every other year, and a qualified person should check on the tree twice a year. It costs about $1,000 for a homeowner in this area to get a tree chopped down. It takes our DPW about a half day to cut a mature ash tree down, sometimes a full day. Treating and checking on these trees would take minutes per tree. Go look at them twice a year. Give them an injection every other year. The math isn't working here. It is too easy for the Springfield DPW to go into full-on lumberjack mode, take out the cherry picker, the chainsaw, the chipper, and have six of our guys chopping down trees all day. What's the cost to our town? Are there other things that are not being done that need attention that are being put aside? One would think weighing all the options that the township that the township should value the trees, the oxygen and the drainage they provide enough to attempt to save them, especially with over 90% success rates. It is my understanding that the old director of the DPW, Kenny Homlish, was the protector of Springfield's trees. Upon his retirement, DPW chopped down a handful of trees he had fought to save for years. We seem to have two bobs in charge of the Springfield DPW now. And if any tree in town might need any sort of ongoing maintenance, the bobs decide together that it's best to chop it down. Who is the new protector of trees here in town now that Kenny is gone? It does not seem like anyone is challenging the bobs on their decisions anymore. The back forest at Ruby Park needs to be saved. It absorbs pollution and sound from 78, provides fresh oxygen, and keeps the air in our neighborhood safe. During heavy rainstorms, a mature ash tree drinks up to an average of 1,000 gallons of water each. There are about 35 ash trees left in the back forest. Where are those 35,000 gallons of water going to go when there's another Ida after the forest is gone? It's going to go into the basements of the residents on Rose, Tooker, and Caudwell. And we do not live in a flood zone. When we purchased our home, flood insurance was not required. We are not protected. What are we supposed to do now that the town is making decisions that put us at a much greater risk to flood? The township says they are keeping us safe by chopping down all the ash trees. They must have a very narrow definition of safety. With the air quality issues we have already, if they chop down the forest, it will not be safe for kids with asthma to play outside in their yards anymore in our neighborhood. The township people I have spoken to about the trees these last few years seem to always want to minimize their benefit. The oxygen these trees provide is real. The pollution they absorb is real. And the flood water they drink up is very real. We have asked many times if the township can please have an independent environmental study done to estimate the impact of what chopping down the forest will do to our neighborhood, its air quality, and its potential to flood. Nothing has been done. It seems anything that might cost a little extra is a big no. No one wants to take responsibility for deciding to spend $10,000 to save the back forest because they don't want to be held accountable if the boars come anyway. They don't want to be blamed for wasting any money. But it's perfectly acceptable in our town to spend millions on an astroturf field and hundreds of thousands on a new pole building. They are willing to stick their necks out to erect something new. But no one seems to want to take any sort of risk to preserve our habitat and save the trees that protect our little neighborhood. You, you don't 30 get to seconds. be... Just Okay, you don't get to be a hero in Springfield for saving trees. The glory only goes to new construction. I also have to mention that the back forest is a natural habitat to all sorts of wildlife. Birds, squirrels, bunnies, bats, and hawks. As humans, we're the only ones who can speak up. The trees certainly don't want to be chopped down. The animals don't want the forest to go. They depend on us to save it. But unfortunately, it seems there's only five votes in this, count that, in this town that count, and they decided a long time ago that the ash trees weren't worth saving. And they are doing nothing proactive to find out what will happen to our little neighborhood after they kill the forest. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Um, thank you for your comments. If anyone else wishing to address us, please step on up. Hello, uh, I'm Hortense Diaz. I'm at 75 South Maple Avenue. 
And I just wanted to commend this uh, lady, our, one of our neighbors here. I loved everything she said. And yes, we need to save as many trees as we can. So let's try to uh, work together to, you know, instead of cutting down, and let's just invest in trying to save whatever we can. Um, but I'm here to also talk to you about a, a new legacy books. Uh, which is a, um, uh, it's a private company that I heard about in, um, in one of my uh, webinars. And they're a New Jersey-based company. They, um, they do everything. This is a collection of used books, books that no longer, uh, that we are all donating to the Green Drop and, and all the other uh, retailers. They collect books. They, re uh, they evaluate the books. They resell the books on secondary markets. They... Um, uh, what they do is once they collect these books, they, they, get, they sell, they get a profit. 20% of the profits that they sell comes back to whoever's hosting a bin. So if we host a bin here, and I've already reached out to the rec center uh, and the library, um, they're not really interested in putting a bin in their property, but possibly I was thinking, um, I spoke to Bob, maybe um, at the pool near the recycling center. Uh, we can host a bin. 20% of the profits, they come in, they drop the bin, they, uh, every month they come and, and empty out the bin, they sell the books, 20% of the profits come back, and we can choose a nonprofit in town, such as uh, the fire department or uh, any of the other uh, uh, organizations here, and uh, we can earn some money, and we can uh, get some books you know, off our land, uh, away from our landfills, and, um, and uh, we can get some profits. So, so I would love for you guys to consider that. The library said no? They don't want to. They don't want to confuse confused. people, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Think of the think of the. Um, the recreation said no. The flag box and the voting bin. They don't you want can't to lose keep a, bins uh, too close together. Spot. They don't want to lose yeah. the parking spot. I don't know how big the bin is, but they need a uh, probably like. A we should be able to make that. It happen. was it, it, just we, we we discussed it at the environmental commission, and right. and it was a fairly larger bin than. Uh, it would it would take space at the rec center. So, it, so in all honesty, it probably does belong near the the recycling center, and which is monitored. I spoke to Bob, and he said yeah. that he would put it inside of the bin, the building. But I don't think that would really work so, for donations. So we, I would like to ask for it to be outside of the building. If if if, if I may ask you, if you can just uh, communicate it to me and the uh, business administrator, and we'll look into it further and okay. and go okay. forward. Okay. But thank you for addressing us. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, Anyone else, else in the audience wishing to address the Township Committee? Seeing no one in the audience, I'll give everybody a moment at home. I'll just read the number again. It's 973-232-4442. Um, if you're at home and you wish to call and address us, give it a few minutes, a few moments. Uh, do, we, do we talk now or you want to wait until the call? Uh, let me give it 10 seconds and I will close the public comment portion of the meeting. Deputy Mayor, you're recognized. Um, so I have a, a pretty good relationship with most of you out there on the Environmental Commission. Not of all of it's been good. I, I, but here's why I'm bringing this up. Um, we did. Um, so Ms. Kennedy back there and I have gone out at, about the Ruby Park situation, which with the baseball field before, and we tried to figure something out with it. I've been yelled at numerous times. Well. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Hort Hortense I, I, I has numerous times has walked down the street and yelled at me about idling my fossil fuel eating nightmares that I have parked in my driveway. Same thing with Allie. Allie has called me up and, and given me earfuls on trees and fields and just everything and and sports being more, important than sports being more yeah uh, betsy has just 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 uh, may i remind the commit the 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 audience public comment is over uh uh please yeah yeah um, yeah so my point on this all is my point on this is that even though we have gone back and forth on certain things i respect the hell out of you for what you guys do because you don't have any other intention but keeping your neighborhood and your town uh, as beautiful as, as it should be. So um, me, I'm willing to work with you in whatever cap capacity I can, uh, and thank you.
for what you guys do. Okay, um, moving on to ex executive session. We will have an executive session. Madam Clerk, will you read the resolution? Whereas Article 6 of the Open Public Meeting Acts provide that a public body may hold a closed session, and whereas the Township Committee will during this meeting enter into discussion of the following matters, attorney client privilege personnel. Whereas the matters to be discussed in closed session are to remain in the strict of, of confidence by all Township Committee members in furtherance of their fiduciary duties to the Township of Springfield. So therefore, be resolved matters discussed at this meeting will be released to the public when the reasons for discussing and acting upon them in closed session no longer exist. Make a motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call. Committee Min Capitis? Yes. Committee Min Huber? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber? 